like to welcome you today. Go to a familiar passage of scripture in the Word of God. The book of St. John, chapter 14. You could probably all quote this with me as we read it, but let's stand together. I'm preaching this morning on my heavenly journey. My heavenly journey. I'm on one. And so are you. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way, you know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for the precious scripture of the word of God, for the celebration of the wonderful memories of these great, great friends and church family that's already parted the ways and Lord so many of us already we know that there's a lot more over in heaven on that side than there is down here and Lord we thank you for the journey we're on and we ask for your patience that we can have the patience to survive it and come out with the flying colors for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ so we that's left behind on this journey We've not made our final destination yet, but we're sure looking forward to it. And Lord, we want to be found pleasing to you and will have accomplished everything in our lives that is important for us to accomplish for you before we stand there with you. Help us to be productive for you while we wait and help us to be patient and thankful on this journey as we serve you. Now may you bless the word of God to our listening hearts and help me to speak only, dear Lord, what you would have me to, nothing more, nothing less. And you just take it and do with it whatever you will. And we take our hands off of it and leave it all to your presence. May the dear Holy Spirit interpret the treasures of the words and the message to our hearts and bless now everything that's said and done. In Jesus' precious name, amen, and please be seated. Our heavenly journey from the cradle to the grave. You can't do much traveling when you're still in the mother's womb. But once you're born and you have that birth certificate, and by the way, that's a lot of privileges little babies by the millions don't have. You're sitting here today because you are not aborted. Right. Amen. God help our country to see where our world has fallen to right now. And I will say these are the most disappointing, drastic, sinful, ridiculous times we're now living in than this world has ever known. We are here by the grace of God as the children of God on a journey, on a journey from the cradle to the grave. It's appointed unto man once to die. After this, the judgment of God. And so that end is going to come for every living soul. 
And our only hope and our best hope is just to have the Lord Jesus come and take us all up together. Would that be a wonderful thing? Amen. Right. And you know there's no scripture left to be fulfilled, but what he could come at any moment, and that is a very good possibility that many in this room will still be here when the Lord Jesus comes. I still look forward to that. So God's placed this upon my heart, and if, and if you don't mind, and I don't think you will, and if you do mind, it don't matter anyway, because I want to skip the baby years up to the time you become an adult, because that's where the rubber beats the road. Yes, how we are raised and the things we're taught from birth on up and little, and I know all of the stages of life, I've gone through every one of them, and it's obvious if there's no one in this room that looks 33 years old, you've all gone through the same stages that I've gone through, so it'll not be necessary. But when you became an individual, and you know what? Real life begins at salvation. Why? Because the sentence of death is upon everyone until you're quickened by the Spirit of God and become a newborn creature in Christ Jesus. And now you're on the right journey. You're journeying on earth and at the final end, there's going to be a final destination. And that destination has to be chosen by you before you get to the end, where it'll be for everlasting too late. There's only two eternal destinies of the soul, and that's what we are always emphasize, always hope, we preach about it, we desire to go there, we've experienced salvation, but I don't know anybody in the world that wouldn't want to go to heaven. And I don't know anyone in their right mind that would ever want to die and go to hell. But that's the risk. From the temporal in life to the eternal. Because there's an eternal destination for every soul. Why? Because the Lord God formed down a man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. And when God makes a living soul, it's going to live forever in one of the two places. The two heavenly destinies, one, one, one is heaven, the other destiny is hell. Two places. The choice of every person's. There's two masters in life. When Jesus Christ knocks at your heart's door, you can either open and let him in or refuse him and stay with your father, the devil. Or you could open it up and have a brand new daddy, right. the Lord Jesus Christ. Behold, I stand at the door and knock, says the Lord Jesus. And if any man will hear my voice, and will open up. I will come in and sup with him. I will be his God and he will be my son. Salvation. And the lock, beloved, is on the inside of your heart. Jesus never forces his way into anyone's life. But when every person gets to a certain age, the word of God is presented in some form or some fashion by some witness or some preacher or some Christian or some lay person or some track or some means that God is going to reveal himself to you. And then when God knocks at that heart's door, you have to open up that latch and let him in. And he will stay on the outside and he will knock till the final rejection is there. He said, my spirit will not always strive with man. So we try the patience of God, and so does many people try the patience of God constantly. But when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ, he quickens you, he makes you alive, he takes your death and your hell and your punishment, and he puts you on a brand new track, or you're on a brand new journey. Guess what? You're on the road up now, not the road down. 
You have to decide to get off the road that leads to destruction. Jesus said, I am the way. Right. And I want you to know that he went down to hell and conquered it. He went to the grave and he conquered it. Yes. And he rose again, the victor. And you right. will not find him one thing Jesus Christ will never do again is he will never go down to the corridors of hell again. Right. Amen. And he lets us make a choice. <laughs> We're on a journey. And that journey begins the minute Jesus comes into your heart. Amen. Because I'm going to be talking about that final destination at the end. But that is your real home. That's where you're headed, is that real home. Well, in the wee hours of the morning, God gave me some words I need to tell you that you need in your life for your journey. Don't you want to have a good journey? Um, you want to have the right kind of a journey. And you don't want to just be a Christian for nothing. You want to be a Christian for something, for whatever God can make you to be. And so there's some words that God gave me. So many of our loved ones are already in heaven. How many have mother and dad both in heaven? Lift your hand. Well, I know tears flow when that song was sung and brothers and sisters and loved ones. And boy, I tell you, heaven is just getting packed fuller and fuller. But I'm so glad you're here today. Amen. Still on a journey. And I'm still glad that God's let me be on a journey, you know, because there's some exciting things. I begin to think of some things that needs to be in our life. And I think the, the thing that really intrigued my thought this morning as God was talking to me before I got out of the bed. And when God talks to me, I can't stay in bed. Yeah. Wow. The first word God gave me today is the word anticipation. Mm -hmm. I thought, man, I'm looking forward to church today. Yeah. I wonder how many people are looking forward to church before they ever get out of bed. Right. I, I came expecting God's blessings and spirit to be here today, and it is. Amen. You know how I know? Because I brought it with me. Amen. <laughs> you know how else I know? Because I see it on your face. Amen. The presence of God yes. is in this place. Mm -hmm. and I just couldn't wait to get here. No. It's called anticipation. You know what? I wonder why a lot of people just go through life making the motions, going through the motions rather than really having anticipation. You know what? Anticipation is just simply exciting. Yeah. It's excitement. You're looking forward to something. Like what? I tell you what, an expectant mother that can put a newborn baby in her arms. And when you go through that, that pregnancy and all you know that there's life living within you and you have to know you're going down into the jaws of death to give birth to a little child. And boy, the moment all about uh, that agony of pain. And how many of you remember your pain of birth? You, you think you do, but you really don't. Because you know what takes away all the pain? When you hold that precious little baby in your arms and you can't believe what you just produced. Mm -hmm. Wow! How expectant mothers. I'm glad they got parking places in these places for expectant mothers. Right. They expect something wonderful to come. And you know, when we come to the house of God, we need to come through those doors expecting God to give us something for the day. Amen. Oh, how many millions of people wing their ways to churches and services and rituals and candle lighting and, and all the maneuvers and come into a church service at a duty or habit and they really don't, they leave empty and barren without the presence of God.
Can I tell you, if the presence of God is not in the house, what good is it? Right. Go home. Yeah. It's a waste mm -hmm. of time without the presence of God. Anticipate. How many of you remember when you found your first house you bought? You, you, you're going to own your first home. And then, when you got tired of it and you found something really beautiful and a good deal, amen? We're going to move. Amen? You get excited. You anticipate this is going to be so much better and make my life so much grander. It's going to be a more pleasant situation and you get excited about it. For any of the blessings God can come along. Why aren't we that excited about church? Mm -hmm. right. Where's the excitement? That we, listen, we get to come to the house of God. Right. We get to come into the presence of the Holy God Himself. We get to come into the presence of our Father, which is in heaven. We get to come into the presence of saints of God who meet collectively with the same purpose, with the same love. We're all blood but wash brothers and sisters by the blood of Jesus Christ. We're family. God's family. Who don't want to get together with the family? That was the biggest curse of, corona, of, of the coronavirus. Yep. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Almost a year you couldn't hug your relatives unless you lived with them and then it wouldn't matter anyway. You live together, you don't have it, they don't, you do. One gets it, the others will. Amen? And then all of a sudden the world is shocked and full of fear and disappointment and it just seems like the laws of the land are getting worse and worse and worse. And the situations of life with freedoms and liberty that God has given is being taken away by the multiplied hundreds every single day as we're sitting on our journey toward our final destiny. Right. I can, all, I can say proudly, I'm glad I'm 80 years old. I don't know what in the world I would do right now if I was back in my 19s or my 20s or, or 20 or 30 years. We need to pray for these expectant mothers that's going to bring little babies and kids into this sin-cursed world. Yes. If yes. Jesus delays his coming, it's going to get worse. Believe me, we're going to face some things even probably things we never dreamed, dreamed we would face in our journey before we leave this life. Right. You look at what's happening in the world. Anticipation. What does that in curtail? Faith. Because when you're anticipating things, you're believing in it, and you're exercising faith and trying to decide all the things you need to do and believing and excited about it. We need to be excited about our journey. Hey, you only have one. Only one journey in life down here. And then the only thing that's going to last is what's done for Christ. So we have to have faith. And what else will anticipation do? Anticipation will give you motivation. If you never think anything's going to happen, guess what? Nothing's going to happen. If you don't think anything's going to change, nothing will change. As a man thinketh, 
so is he, says the word of God. So we need to be motivated in our journey. And I just think it's important to anticipate and to get excited right. and to make some plans and to have some positive energy and some positive efforts. And this, this anticipation is what really, really spoke to my heart. And then if you're anticipating thing, here's another thing, expectation. Expectation. Way back in school, I read a book, Great Expectations. Anybody else sentenced to read that book? When you were in school? Well, maybe I'm older than you are, I don't know. But that was a book that we, how great it is to have great expectations. There's some things we expect, okay? And first of all, on anticipation, here's one thing, and, and, and expectation too, and this is, a, this is key, expect and anticipate the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We used to expect it sometimes, but don't you think we should anticipate it? Mm -hmm. That we should think on it a little more? Right. About what's happening and what we need to do? Because we're on a journey that takes a lot of the things like uh, the words that I'm giving you right now. We need these things to have a happy, wonderful journey. And that's anticipation and that's expectation. In other words, expectation is coming into the knowledge of the truth and facing reality. Expect what's real to show up. Amen. Can I tell you the world itself of unsaved people are sick and tired of Christians not being Christians. Amen. Not living like it. Not walking like it. Not talking like a Christian. Not looking like a Christian. Not acting like a Christian. The McCoys used to sing a song that was a great blessing to me. He said, give me the real thing. Yeah. Don't give me no substitute. Right. There is no substitute right. for salvation. Right. There is no substitute for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. There is no substitute for the blessed, precious blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. There are no substitutes for real salvation and right. for real Christianity. Amen. We're going to learn a song, but David just, I like that. I'd rather be an old time Christian than anything I know. Because yep. I don't like the modern Christianity. Amen. I don't like the Christianity that quits preaching the Bible. I don't like Christianity that tries to destroy the cross and the doctrines of the Word of God. I don't like Christianity that thinks they can talk like they want and look like they want and act like they want and leave God out of their principles and out of their life. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because we're, we're the only Christ the world sees. Right. And what the world sees, the world's sick of it. That's right. And so is God. I cringe in my shoes to think what the Lord has to look at. Right. And how he's treated. Come to reality and get out of the fancy, fanatical world. Believe. That's what you've got to do. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And after you believe on him, you need to believe he's going to take care of everything. You've got to believe his word and his instruction book Amen. to walk your journey the way God wants it to go. He's got a plan. He's got a pathway. 
He's giving you the lamp to your feet and the light to your path. He's giving you the Holy Spirit of God and power within you to walk with Him on this journey. Oh, I'm so glad I don't have to walk it alone. I'm so glad, too, that I've got a wonderful wife that's walked it with me for how many years now, honey? 1960. More than I can count. Let me get my computer. <laughs> Amen? Family that God blessed me with. All saved, serving God. That's my wish for every family in America, that they would all be saved and all the family would be saved. So the great, great reunion in heaven would not have no broken, no, no broken circles, no broken family circles in heaven would be my desire for everyone. God has been so good. Amen. Expecting, believing in him. You can have complete trust in God. Amen. There is no disappointments in heaven. Amen. Jesus has never disappointed me. He's never failed me. He's never let me down. He's never failed you or let you down. He's never disappointed anyone in this room. Even if you think by him taking one of your loved ones, he disappointed you, then you better research the scriptures and find out your loved ones would probably wring your neck and kill you if you ever called them back from heaven down to this incursed earth. Oh, yeah. Why? Because we're all made for a final destination. Right. Our choices. It's already been bought. We've been still aboard the old ship of Zion. One day we got on board. One day we started our journey. One day the journey will come to an end. But there's no disappointments in heaven. Amen. I just wonder how many times we disappoint God down here. Yes. How do we make God feel? Because we don't anticipate, we don't expect things. Those two words just bear down upon my heart. And then the next word I want to give you, so important, it's, it's the word participation. Because you've got to participate. Right. What do you mean, preacher? Get involved. You can think about salvation. You can hear it all your life. You can you can uh, think about it. And you can pray about it. Or you can walk without it. You can do whatever you want. But somewhere you've got to take it as your own. And you've got to receive it as your own. You have to participate in salvation. Right. Because the whole choice is yours. Not God's. Right. Amen. Then after you get saved. And now you're on your heavenly journey. I've got news for you. I am talking and preaching about my heavenly journey. Because that's where I'm headed. Right. I'll not look back. Amen. There's nothing to go back to. Right. But forward. And you're on the journey. And if you're in this room and you're saved by the grace of God, or you're listening by way of internet, and you're saved by the grace of God, you're on God's journey. Right. You're on a Christian journey. You're on a heavenly journey. You're on the right road to heaven. That means you don't ever have to worry about going to hell anymore. Your course has changed. Everything about you has changed. And when you're talking about participation, we're talking about personal decisions to accept Christ and personal see, uh, decisions to be servants, willing servants of the Lord Jesus Christ.
because God didn't make you get saved and God won't make you serve him. He'll just make you wish one day you had when you stand there and the rewards are being given out. Amen. Think about that. Commitment. People don't want to commit anymore. That's why the world's living together outside the bonds of marriage. That's why they don't have intestinal fortitude and strength enough to do what's right. Right. Well, I don't want to get married. I just want to try it out. Oh, really? <laughs> Give me a break. That tells me you didn't know what you were doing in the first place. You don't try something out. Right. You make a decision. What's right and what's wrong? Be not unequally yoked together, unbelievers with believers. What fellowship with had has darkness with light? When light comes, darkness flees. Except two walk together in agreement. They can't walk together. Right. There's all kind of Bible and principles. And people's minds are all messed up. They don't, many people don't know what to do and to start with. So we need, we need to, uh, to make personal decisions, to make right decisions, and make commitments to what you, decide what's right, make a plan to do what's right, make a commitment to do what's right. When I got saved, I just simply committed myself to the Lord. Amen. You still have to commit yourself to the Lord after you become saved. Because you already know your flesh can take over real easy. That's right. We need to learn to grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord. In other words, just get into the game. Right. You're not saved just so you can go to heaven and miss hell. You're saved to help God bring the rest of the world into the same blessings that you're in. Man. That's God's only plan is to take believers to give out the word empowered by the Holy Spirit of God that they can make the same choice. And if somebody loved you enough to preach to you, you ought to love somebody enough to preach for them. Amen. If somebody loved you enough to pray for your soul, you ought to pray for other soul. Right. If somebody loved you enough to give you the warnings and to draw you to salvation, you ought to give out those warnings. You need to get involved in the soul winning game. And you need to become a participant in serving God in the right. church. There's a place to serve God in this church. Uh, and listen, when we open up full fledged and get some more of the classrooms done and get the plans we've already talked about that we can't install right now because uh, of the limitations of meeting and, and the lack of workers and the lack of people to do the jobs that God wants us to do in this place. There's a job here for every person to serve God and to be a productive member of God's society in this place yep. and to propagate the gospel of Jesus and to work to help grow the grace and the knowledge and the work of God himself in this place. Right. Participating. Getting involved. Preparation. You need to prepare. Amos said when he pronounced God's judgment, God's patience had worn out with the way they had, were treating the Lord. And God sent a message through the prophet Amos and said, God says, because I will do this unto you, prepare to meet thy God. That's right. Now, I've heard preachers take that and say, oh, prepare to meet God. God wasn't talking about that there. He's saying, it's too late right now. You prepare for what I'm going to do unto you because you've already done unto me where I've cut you off. Yep. 
So let's say people, God will not always speak to your heart. Right. There will not always be an opportunity to be saved. You'll get saved when God speaks to your heart or you'll never be saved. Amen. Because there's something like the drawing of the Holy Spirit of God. Jesus said to we who are saved, you lift me up. And he was lifted up between, suspended between earth and heaven on the cross. And if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Beloved believers, if we lift up Jesus Christ with our conversation, with our walk, with our talk, with our life, and they see that, Jesus said, I'll draw them unto me. Maybe some of your loved ones can't be drawn unto him because they haven't seen enough Christ in you. Ponder that one upon your heart. <laughs> May you do something to be more like Jesus. Yes. Help the world to see there's a better road. Help them to know there's a better journey. Prepare to meet that God. Hezekiah was on the journey and he was the first godly king in the succession of many decades of kings that had shut down the house of God and put out the lights in the sanctuary. And, uh, and Hezekiah came in and he threw all of the all of the wicked people out of the sanctuaries and, and repaired the doors in the house of God and he, he restored the house of God and had this in his kingship and man Hezekiah was blessed and, and he was getting up in years and one day God sent, sent a, a prophet in and said Hezekiah God said set your house in order because you're going to die that's right <coughs> That's preparation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you need to set your house in order. And Hezekiah just like, Lord, right now, I'm just enjoying you. I, I don't want to die. <coughs> I don't want my journey down here to be finished. God heard his prayer before the prophet got out the door. God said, you go back and tell Hezekiah, I've added 15 years to his life. Amen. So God can add to your journey. Mm -hmm. Or God can take you home. Yes. Whenever he chooses. It's so important to walk in your journey with God. I've got to close with some scripture I love. I wish I had all day to preach. <laughs> I know you'll get hungry before I quit. <laughs> that I know. But you know, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, For we know that if this earthly house of our town, this tabernacle, were dissolved, we have a building of God, and a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens, for in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon uh, with our, our house, which is from heaven. And David covered that, how we, in this body, we groan. Yeah. We're walking in, in pain. And a lot of people groan even to get out of the seat. <laughs> <laughs> Our men meet in here for prayer and get around the altar. And boy, when Neil Larson is long and everybody prays and, and back, oh, some of them have already sat down and now some of them's laying down. Oh, I can't get up. How many times do we have to be helped up from the altar of God? Amen. Oh, we're groaning bodies. Amen. We're a groaning, murdering bunch of people. Amen. <laughs> Because you want this old body's wear out. Yeah. But one day you're going to have a new one. Amen. <laughs> Woo! Amen. Glory! <laughs> I love it. We groan. 
But the Bible goes on to say for, I'm going to find where I was. Now I got excited. <laughs> yeah, I just read right down here, uh, down in verse 13, that just happened to me. For whether we be sad ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober, it's for your cause. Yeah, I get beside myself once in a while. Amen. You know what? I like to be out of this old man right. beside myself yep. once in a while. It's good. I like it. If I get excited, hey, it's my privilege because yeah. I'm on a journey yeah. and I love it. Hey. Thank yeah. you. I don't know. That just came right straight from God. That <laughs> hey. Amen. Now he that hath wrought us for the self same thing as God who if who hath given unto us the earnest of the spirit yes. that's a down payment with the spirit of yes. God that's what that uh. is therefore we are always confident knowing that while we were yet in the body we were absent from the Lord for we walk by faith and not by sight that's right we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Paul is saying, I, I would rather be at home with the Lord where my journey's yes. end is. But you know what? Huh? Whether we labor or whether we are present or absent, here's the thing in verse 9, that we may be accepted yeah. of Him. Yes. Man. Is God accepting your service? Is God pleased with who you are? And he goes on to say, it's so important. Why? For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body down here in this journey, according to that he who hath done, whether it be good or whether it be bad. Therefore, knowing the terror of yes. the Lord, persuade men. we persuade yes. men. Man. I told you I could go the rest of the day and I quit. <laughs> One more thing. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it talks about him conquering death and hell. And death is going to last enemy to yes. be destroyed. I'm so glad that death is going to come to an end. Amen. Right. Amen. In Jesus Christ, death comes to an end. Amen. At the end of that journey, then he goes on. He talks about the bodies of all the seeds and the birds and the fowls. And there's one body given to one and another of another. And another, it said, there's one glory of the sun, and another glory of the, of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star different from another, a star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown, this is our body, it is sown in corruption. It is raised incorruptible. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. Wow. It is a natural body. And it is raised a spiritual body. Yes. And it goes on to talk about that. Right. When this mortal yeah. shall have put on the immortality. When this corruptible shall have put on the incorruption. Yes. Then's brought the saying, O death, where is thy sting? Yes. O grave, where is thy victory? Yes. The sting of death. Yes. It was conquered by the Lord Jesus Christ. O grave, where is thy victory? But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Last point. Eternal destinations. What will yours be, heaven or hell? I just have time to tell you this. I just wrote a story this week 
for the second edition of Before the Sun Sets Tell Someone. I've already got 34 stories written out of the next 50 that will be coming down the line. And by the way, help me spread the word about the first one first. I mean, <laughs> I that's important, that. man. We want to keep the printing presses hot. But I wrote a story about the blessing of a new car. I have not time to give it all to you, but I will tell you the illustration at the end. When I went into the ministry, God provided a, a, a funds for Judy and I to go to the to go to the a Ford Motor Company dealership and we bought a brand new Pinto. A brand new Pinto. <laughs> a little sport car. <laughs> the hottest car on the market. We paid $2,500 cash out of the door. Because I knew I was resigning Ford Motor Company and I was going to drive 66 miles a day to Midwestern to college and back. Plus, I, two weeks into my freshman year of college, I was elected pastor of the first church I, I pastored. So it was ministry, plus I used it for work, and for six years we drove that car in the ministry without one single problem with that little car. It was the best little car, I guess, that I've ever had, and probably the best return on it. But you know what we did the first day we bought that car? We went out, and we sat in, and we prayed, and we dedicated this car to God. Amen. Asked him to protect it, and thanked him for it. Amen. And praised him for it, and dedicated it to him. <clears throat> One day later, I put my little New Testament, some tracks in the glove compartment, and carried those all the time, went into work, and I had taken a demotion, a self inflicted demotion uh, they had per, they had given me I was at the top of my grade and they put me on the day shift and gave me a junior supervisor position and when I knew I wanted to go to college I couldn't go to college working day shift so I went to my boss and I told him I said I want to go to Christian college I'm going full-time to the ministry in the future and I, I was preparing for that preparing myself for it and I took a, a demotion. I went back to my old job, up to my old uh, thing, and I went on afternoon shift, and, and, and God saw me do that. Guess what? Two weeks later, I was pastoring a church God provided. Right. God didn't want me to stay there five years at Ford Motor Company. Right. Amen. And that's the way God is. You're going to give yourself to me. I'm going to take care of you. Don't worry about it. And so I got, we dedicated that little car, and I was, uh, our payroll office was now, was now back in the plant and in where all of the, the parts are, steel parts are produced for the automobiles and, and the payroll office is there. And the, there was a, a foreman there by the name of Chuck that came into the payroll office in the afternoon. It's about an hour and a half before my lunch break. He was shaking, he was sweating, he was ashy white. And it took him, Chuck, what's wrong? And it took him a little bit of time to even tell me what was wrong. And he said, I was, you know, I'm a material handling you. He said, I was standing by my auto driver and I was watching him lift this huge steel rack of, of steel parts up to make it stack real high. And he said, all of a sudden, he said, I got distracted and looked, uh, looked aside and he said, that thing toppled. And he said, that steel toppled off of that. And said that thing. he said, I saw it just the time. He said, I stepped aside and boom, he said, it fell right where I was standing. He said, I was almost killed. <coughs> now I'd witnessed a chuck a time or two but I thought this was a good time to talk to him. I said, Chuck, if that big crate of steel had fallen on you, where would you be? He said, I'd be dead. I said, I know that, but where would you be in eternity? Would you be in heaven? Or would you be in hell? He 
He said, I don't know. I said, would you like to know? He said, yes, I would. And I figured he'd do anything I asked him right then because he was scared to death. I said, I'll tell you what. I want you to go back out, <coughs> out into the plant, do your job. I have a lunch break in an hour and a half. If you still want to know how to know, I'll tell you. An hour and a half later, Chuck came back in. I said, come go with me. And we walked through the plant out into the parking lot, and it was already dark. It had already turned dark to where that little Ford Pinto was parked. And I got in the driver's seat and Chuck got in the passenger seat, shut the door, and I asked him, I said, open that glove box. And he opened the glove box and said, get me that Bible. And he reached in there and got me that Bible. And that bright dome light, I'll never forget how beautiful and bright it shined on the sacred pages. Mm -hmm of the Word of God. Amen. As in that dedicated car, I led Chuck to Christ. Amen. His journey to heaven started. Yes. It's real, folks. Amen. This is not just Baptist theory or Baptist doctrine. Right. There's a heaven to gain. There's a hell to shine. You'll start your journey and it will come to a final conclusion. Amen. The Bible describes that. The Bible describes it. I'll say this. I'm sorry for the loss of any of our loved ones. Humanly speaking with our relationships down here. But I'm not sorry for a single one of them that's in heaven. Amen. Amen. My little brother went 19 years old long ago. Some of you got perhaps even little babies, you know, that's passed away. My my brother Billy and Leela had two little twin boys, and uh, they were born toxic. One lived one day, and one lived two days. One's name was Dallas, and one's name was Todd. My little brother tried with the doctors to save the little babies, and both of those little babies, the Lord took them home. Yeah. And I'll never forget, they had a little white casket with two little babies in them with roses on it. They're not going to be little babies right. in heaven. <laughs> They're not going to be toxic anymore. Amen. They will be 33 and a half years old. <laughs> and whether you like it or not, you will be too. <laughs> whether you look like it now or not, you will be too. Because one day those glorified bodies are coming out. Praise his holy name. Amen. One of these days we're going to be together in that great reunion in heaven. Right. And there'll be no more sorrow, no crying, no pain, no tears. Right. Because my journey will have come to an end. Glory. Right. Down Amen. here. But the greatest blessing of heaven is with all the glory and the splendor. It will never end. It's an eternal situation. I just think that's an awesome deal. Amen. Say amen right there. That's right. Awesome. Amen. To know the Lord Jesus and to walk with him in your journey. Let's stand together. Heavenly Father, bless your word today. Thank you for placing the thoughts upon my heart. Thank you for the Spirit of God and your presence that's evident in this room. Touch every one that's listened today, Lord, to be a better Christian. 
We know there's going to be no disappointments with anything you ever did or everything you will ever do or anything you've ever prepared for those that love you. Lord, help us not to disappoint you. Help us to be the Christian you'd have us to be, the ministers you'd have us to be, the servants you would have us to be. Bless this ministry. Bless this church. Fill this auditorium, Lord. Help us to witness more souls being saved and baptized and being brought to you. It's our desire today, we ask collectively together in the name of Jesus for you to bless this church yes. in a way that it will be evident to everybody that you're the one that's in charge in this place. Do it for your glory, for the benefit of the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name I pray.